In terms of meeting with um, uh, salespeople, people out at motorcycle dealerships who were selling helmets, I have just had a very negative experience, at least with one dealership. I've gone to a couple, and the one here, I'm not going to name them by name, but here in Denver, the uh, probably one of the largest motorcycle dealerships in the Denver area, uh, maybe in the state. And again, I won't name them by name, but they're right off of I-25. <laughs> Get off out of Rapaho. Anyway, that place, oh my God. I had the worst experience at that place in terms of getting help with a helmet. Those people were absolutely horrible. And I can say that with confidence and from my heart because it was just such a a a whack experience a whack experience it was just horrible those people didn't help me out at all i mean i went in there this is before i bought the rf 1100 helmet i went in there and i asked them you know for some help you know give, can you give me some help with um with with helmets you know and fitting the helmets and safety and all that because i didn't know anything about helmets and they were just horrible. I mean, the response was, yeah, man, just go over there to the rack and just try on a few different helmets and whatever fits, whatever fits you, I mean, there's your helmet, you know? <laughs> it's like, no attempt to talk about size, to measuring your head, no attempt to talk about fit, no attempt to educate me on rating systems or anything like that, nothing. Man, those people were absolutely horrible, hated it. It was just the worst the worst experience in terms of trying to uh, in terms of trying to find a, a, a helmet and a good fitting helmet. So what I ended up doing was going to the internet and looking things up and doing my own research and went to another dealership and asked them for help. And and they were more helpful. But man, that place, whoo, horrible. Cannot say that enough. Now what I have found, and again, I'm no expert, but what I have found and from what, what my research and just kind of my own, just kind of what feels right to me, what I have found I've had to do was actually try on the helmet. Now, I know you can buy helmets online. I actually bought this helmet online, but I did not buy the helmet without trying it on first. And I know sometimes we don't have the luxury of being next to a a dealership where we can go and try on different helmets but if you can man do that or if you can't do as much research on the front end as you can to understand does this felt helmet fit a round head does this helmet fit an oval head does this helmet helmet fit uh, an intermediate shaped head so try and find out what kind of shape you have measure your the circumference around your head you go right above your eyebrow and go to sort of like the the, the biggest part of your head. You want to just think about big head and measure your big head. Go around your eyebrow and try to find the biggest part of your head. Measure right around that with the tape measure and, and use that as a starting point. If you order the helmet online and you get it, you got to try it on and you can't just trust those, those measurements. Because when I had that RF 1100, man, one size fit me perfect on the sides of my head but on the front and the back, there was a big old gap. And I thought it was fine. I even asked the, the salesperson, I was like, hey, is this okay? You know, I mean, he's like, yeah, if it looks okay, it feels good, you know, I mean, you can just go with it. And just, I'm telling you, just ridiculous. And uh, that's not the case. You have to have a helmet that fits around the crown of your head, the, not the crown, not the top, but the, the fattest, the biggest circumference part of your head well it has to fit you very well you want very little play put the helmet on move the helmet forwards and backwards and see if there's any play move the helmet side to side and see if there's any play look in the mirror 
look in the mirror and see if you can see the helmet sort of physically moving a lot. I mean, you're going to have some play, obviously. Uh, and you don't want a helmet that's too small. You don't want a helmet that's squeezing your brain, you know, giving you a headache. Try and turn the helmet. What I would do is I put the helmet on. I would try and turn the helmet and see if I can actually, you know, twist it from side to side. I mean, that's key because you got to... You got to figure you want that helmet to stay in place, you know, in the event, in the event that you get off your bike, <laughs> you know, and you're bouncing along the road on the asphalt or, or, or dirt, whatever, you want to make sure that that helmet stays in place. The other thing I would say is to try and take the helmet off of your head, like, 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 um, attach the, the D rings, you know, and cinch it up nice and tight. I mean, not too tight, obviously, that you're going to be choking yourself. But cinch it up nice and, and tight and try and roll the helmet off of your head. Try and roll it forward off the top of your head. Try and roll it back up off the top of your head. See if your head's going to be swimming inside that helmet. Um, you want to make sure that it's going to stay on your cranium in the event that you come off your bike. A couple of other things that you may want to consider... And you know, and, I, and I've considered is you know what type of, of riding are you going to do? I mean, obviously you want a helmet that is best suited for your 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 seating position, whether you are upright, whether you are leaned over. And for example, this Showy Quest helmet is made for a little bit more of an upright position. The vents are situated so that you can get maximum airflow in an upright position. And not all helmets are like that. Some helmets are meant to be, you know, bent over a little bit more. And that's where you're going to get the, the most ventilation, the most airflow, the most aerodynamic uh, flow through the air with those types of helmets. And then the last thing for me, and this is your own personal preference, but for me, I wanted to make sure that I could find a helmet that was in high vis, boy. You know, I needed something that is visible, you know? Uh, <laughs> so you want a, a color that stands out. But again, you know, that's personal preference. You decide what you want to do. You know, I like the high vis. Before this one, my, my helmet was not high vis. It was yellow. It was like a school bus yellow, which I loved. I love that helmet. But, you know, I decided to, to take the plunge and go high vis all the way. And I've been loving it. And I am not going back. <laughs> I'm telling you, I love the high vis, boy. People, people notice you. It's crazy because people look at you all the time. I love it. Love, love, love it. Go high vis. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. Anyway, just some thoughts from me. Again, I don't claim to be an expert, but this is from my research, from my experience. But go out there, find a, a helmet that fits your head well. And just enjoy this ride and be safe out here. So ride safe, ride with care, my friends, and ride with confidence. Head up 100%. This is Super B. The risk of riding without a helmet is huge. Almost every collision, the rider is ejected from the motorcycle, and the first thing that hits the ground and collides with the ground is, of course, your body and your head. One summer, Rutherfordton police saw three no-helmet accidents. And all three of those riders ended up dying. To take the risk is a personal choice, but taxpayer money is involved. Michigan lifted their helmet requirement last year, and the first study since reveals a 51% rise in motorcycle crash insurance claims. Right now, North Carolina saves over $100 million through its helmet law, saving on Medicaid claims and long-term care after serious accidents. But I'm glad I had a helmet on. My head had hit a rock. If I didn't have that helmet on, it would kill me probably. In Rutherford County, Ashley Searles, News 13.